Hello Daily Drafters and welcome back to the channel for today's Daily Draft. We are reluctantly still drafting Lord of the Rings here on the channel here today. Uh, got plenty more Lord of the Rings drafts left to go. Hopefully we can find a way to have more success than we have here lately. We have had one of the most unlucky runs I think I've ever had in my 800 plus drafts that I've done in my lifetime in the last six or plus years. I just cannot shake the unluckiness that's going on in this format. Don't worry, we're taking Rangers of Adelian here back on pick one, so things will be fine. But I'm just here to say that, you know, things haven't been going super well. What I do here on this channel is I post everything that I draft. Look, you see every single draft that I do, and I'm here about, like, showing you different things. We had, you know, a blue-green draft on Friday that didn't go particularly well. I don't think the deck is great. We're learning more and more things, so for those of you that can't draft near as often as I can, I'm sitting here, you know, using my gems so you don't have to, is what I like to say a lot of the time. Um, or wasting my gems so you don't have to, <laughs> which is what's happening in this, this set. So we're going to have to do something a little bit different than what's been going on lately, because what has been going on lately is not very good. So, blue-red is a deck that I do really, really like. And it's a spells-based deck, but Hammer and Rangers of Adillion are both great cards to have. So I'm going to take Hammer and, you know, maybe we'll deceive the messenger like we have been a lot of the time <laughs> in this format so far. Um, okay, so Warbeast is a follow-up here, but, like, not a great one. There's Arwen's Gift, there's Hithlane Knots. There's Troll if we want to dip into black. There's Celeborn the Wise, but that is a trap. That card is not great, and obviously blue-green is not really a deck you want to get into. There's Prince Emerhill here. Um, I do love me a copy of Arwen's Gift. I guess Prince Emerhill is a possibility here to like stake our claim in blue-white, and I guess... It, Prince is going to be better than Arwen if we do end up in blue-white. And I think we're going to be able to get a copy of at least Arwen's gift here if we want it. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Prince Imrahil the Fair. Now we've got some red to follow up. It is not the good red that wants to push you into red here. There is a Pelagir Survivor though. And blue-white, even though it does have Prince Imrahil at the face, is not necessarily a draw two deck in this format. So I don't think I'm going to, you know, necessarily lean into that. Blue-white, I think, is meant to be a little bit more of a control deck here. So let's take Pelor Gear Survivor. And then I think we'll take Elrond, Lord of Rivendell. Um, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, scry one if it's the second time the ring tempts you. And with Prince, you know... If we draw two cards in a turn, we'll get a creature for free. There's also Torment of Gollum if we want to try to go into blue-black, which is possible, but I haven't been able to black to draft black. Ooh, hello, Gandalf Sanction. <laughs> I haven't been able to draft black in about three weeks here on the channel, so that's probably not happening. See, pick six, no black cards. That's kind of what's going on here in the format. Green is horrible. And black is undraftable. So you're playing a Jeskai format here at this point between blue, red, and white. Because you just can't really draft black in most of these casual pods. So we're going to go ahead and take Gandalf Sanction pretty easily there. Followed by Alorian Revealed. Well, here the Windlord is not a reason to get into blue, blue-white specifically. We'll take Lorien Revealed. Goes well with Prince Emerhill if we have to splash the Sanction. But I'm thinking we're looking more in blue-red here. Going to go ahead and take Arwen's Gift. There's a Captain, which could go well with Prince Emerald. There's also Banish. So maybe blue-white ends up being more open than blue-red here. Banish is better than Captain of Umbar. So we'll go ahead and take the Banish. Nothing playable here. So we'll go ahead and cut the blue card, put it in the sideboard, and again, play in the Jeskai format. 
every time I put green in my deck, I lose many more games than I win. And every time I try to draft black, the table says, what if you didn't? <laughs> Wheeling Arwen's Gift anyway. Dreadful. There's a War Beast, but I'll take... I don't like Nimrodel Watcher either. It's just... It's too slow. We do have two Arwen's Gifts, but... So we're towing the line between blue-red and blue-white here, but obviously playing blue today. Gonna go ahead... I'll just cut the blue card. Doesn't really matter there. Okay. Only blue card is dreadful. Won't be taking that. So it's between flowering of the white tree for a blue-white life. Or Foray of Orcs, which is a great card in blue-red. And I think I'm going to take Foray of Orcs here. We didn't pass any red in pack one. We might get hooked up with a little bit of red in pack two. Flowering of the White Tree is good. It's just our deck is not looking to be super creature heavy right now. And Foray is going to be very good in a blue-red spells deck. So I'm going to take that and hope that blue-red spells be, is open enough for us. Sarum on the White's great here. 5 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, amass 2. There's an Oliphant for splashing if we do go blue-white. But when there's as good of a card as Saruman, we'll go ahead and take that. Urkenbrand is good and has beaten me many a time here on the channel. But not for blue-red. There is a Deceive the Messenger, and I love me a Deceive the Messenger. Already have six sorceries, I guess five sorceries in an instant. This is a second instant here. Could take Errand Rider, but I think we're leaning more blue-red here today. Soothing of Smeagol, a second Pelagir Survivor. I think I'll take my second Pelagir Survivor and really try to fill out this blue-red deck with some good, good high-quality spells. Lorien Reveal, there is a Soothing of Smeagol here. Is that better than the second Lorien Revealed? It's good early interaction. We have two Arwen's Gift and a Lorien Revealed so far. I think I'm going to take the first copy of Soothing here over the second Lorien Revealed. Red isn't at all open, but, I mean, we have Foray, Gandalf Sanction, and Aemir. If we just fill out a bunch of blue cards, maybe we get a Smite in pack three, and then maybe we get another decent red uncommon, and we play, like, six red cards and 17 blue cards with how this is going so far. Probably don't need to play... A dreadful as the storm. Everything else looks fine, though. Elrond probably won't be at his best in this deck, but he's a good, you know, target for removal from our opponent. And also just a fine card. We have a few more creatures than most blue-red decks play in this format, so Elrond could be better than he would be otherwise. So let's see what comes around here. Still in pick six, so we have a couple of picks here to get something. All right, Gandalf Sanction number two. We're doing it. Blue-red is open. But red is not necessarily open, so it's interesting. Currently, two instant six sorceries here, so we'll be all right in that department. Here comes the train honking its way down the track. All right, Glorious Gale over Treason. Do we take Treason to buy back something like Sanction, Foray? I think I'll take my first Glorious Gale over a Treason here. Deceive the Messenger, let's go. <laughs> Again. I have drafted dozens of Deceive the Messengers in this format. I just love the card. It does so much. 
and usually trades for a creature on their side. All right, Ring Sight, no thanks. Don't need a second Dreadful. Probably not playing War Beast here, so, but we'll go ahead and cut the red card. Not looking to wheel very much. Maybe there was an Arwen's Gift we could wheel, but I don't think I would play three. I don't think Alorian Revealed is going to wheel. We had that pick two or three. Lancer, probably not for this deck, but I'll cut it. Same thing here. Probably not a knight either. So 16 cards, we need 7 out of the last pack. I think that's manageable. Not to mention, we have cards we could fill out the deck with if we wanted to here. The thing is, I don't necessarily want to. <laughs> Alright, what do we get? We get a second Saruman the White and a Soothing of Smeagol number two. Would love to get a Bilbo. <laughs> There's also Moria Marauders, but we don't have a lot of temptation here. Our curve is not outstanding. I wonder if we have to take Soothing of Smeagol over Saruman the White here. No, I think it's still Saruman. I think the card's too good to take Soothing over it, soothing over it here. Alright, Saruman's Trickery is a pretty good pickup for us. There is Claim and Dunlink Rebane, but that ship has sailed, as it always does. So we'll take trickery and not wheel anything out of this pack unfortunately excuse me what <laughs> the only card we could even remotely consider playing is fire it or thank pick three so our neighbor is in blue as well we are hooking up our neighbors in black here but we're blue red so we can't play any card here except fire and we're not going to do that so Sure. <laughs> that was terribly unfortunate. All right, another whiff here. Is blue red even open? I think our neighbor might be drafting exactly blue red underneath us here now. We got a late Gandalf sanction and pack. All right, now we got trickery. I don't know what's going on, but we'll take trickery here. Currently 6 and 6, and the curve is looking pretty good for Trickery. Elrond's the only other 3-drop that we have that isn't sanctioned when we're going to be casting that relatively later. Three more picks to find something good here. Book of Mazarbul's not great in this deck. I guess I'll take an Isolation, or should I take a Cast into the Fire? I think I'll take isolation with triple counter spell isolation gets a little bit better the balrog <laughs> we have an envelope what do we take otherwise captain of umbar let's take the balrog <laughs> i don't think we're playing him but we'll see all right hit flame knots tempo draw card i guess So the deck isn't great, as is a theme with our decks in the format, but we're going to try to make it work here today. And we're not really wheeling anything, we already determined. Oh, wow. All right, well, we thought about pack three pick one-ing soothing there, so we'll take that. That was a gift. Not going to wheel anything pick ten. Same thing here, and we're probably going to have to fit in one more card over there. Seven creatures, 15 spells for Gandalf Sanction.
we'll see what we can fit in as our last card here. Probably want to play 17 lands. I found blue-red really does want to play 17 in this format. It was weird. <laughs> Light flickered on me. Blue-red does want to play 17 here, so we have to add a card. I don't think we add the Balrog. That would require us to play Envelope. So we have 15 spells here. The only other spells we could add are Rush the Room, Dreadful as the Storm, and Fired or Thank. Otherwise, we add like a random War Beast, and it doesn't seem good though, does it? We don't have a lot of temptation going on here, and by a lot, I mean the only temptation we have is Rangers, Double Soothing, and half of a Glorious Gale. And I guess Elrond, but we're not really playing two creatures in a turn very often. So, Dreadful is the Storm works well with these Orc armies. It's got Foray of Orcs, Deceive the Messenger, Saruman's Trickery, Saruman the White. I guess I'll try out a Dreadful is the Storm. I don't love it, but I don't like many of our other options either. So, we'll try it out like this. A blue-red deck that didn't necessarily get there, but in my opinion is the best deck in the format here at this point in the format. So, we'll see if it's good enough to get more than our average of one or two wins lately. See you in game one. All right, we go first with Survivor on two, which is going to have to do here. Hopefully it survives so that we can hold up Trickery on three. Also would love a land, but... Can't be twice as lucky all at once, can you? That wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, who needs lands? Um, all right, I guess we're holding up Trickery here. And then see if we can get out of this. I'd rather you not. Sure, let's do this while they're tapped out. We'll see if they have a way to remove it. But even if they do, we got rid of their signpost uncommon here. Call of the Ring, that's a good one. <laughs> Freaking Orcish Bowmasters is an even better one. Do I have to Gandalf sanction Orcish Bowmasters? It's very possible I do. <laughs> Deceive the messenger. I mean, it's a good card, but is it good enough here? Sure. Let's see if Bowmasters is going to take over this game. I can kind of surprise them with Sanction on one of their 1-1s one once their life total gets pretty low. I've got a bunch of spells here. I 
Okay. Okay. Sure, let's go ahead and do this here. Okay, they get a bunch of counters, but I can tap that thing down at instant speed. Again, still have sanction to kind of... do some good work here. So the knots is going to let the bowmasters hit us for one and a mass one. Is that right? Minus one, minus one. Yeah, so whenever they draw a card, except the first one they draw on each of their draw steps, so they are going to be able to amass one here. Which means I don't cast Hithlane Knots right now. Because Elrond dies? I still think I'm going to do it. I know they kill Elrond. Ooh, that is a lot of damage from the Bowmasters. <laughs> but again, Gandalf's Sanction is going to do some really good work. So they're going to amass two and throw two damage around. Oh god, why is the Bowmaster such a good card? I guess I should have done... If I'm planning on killing them here, which I could do if I deceive the messenger and Gandalf Sanction. Yeah, they're jumping. I'm going to hold up Trickery and Deceive here. I might chump at their Bowmasters just to make sure I can survive. It depends if they attack with this. I'm not sure. Let's see. Okay, they go to six. I think I do chump here. Well, I'd have to, basically. <laughs>
Now this is lethal. They played a card that had two creatures now. So now I have to chump and bounce. Sanction deals five to them. They were dead so many ways there. This is this is what happens to me in this format. It's just like they have to there's so little amount of things that they can have that were, they weren't dead in that situation i soothing and then i don't have the mana for sanction i gift they chump they throw me down here so if they have removal for this i bounce that and maybe i survive here i i don't know I mean, they were dead, what's the saying, five ways to Sunday or whatever? I don't even know last turn. I countered their spell that got rid of this thing and put it on lethal. I had a removal spell for their creature and can attack for six, but they played one creature that had two creatures attached to it. They go to four. They're just dead to sanction now, so I've got multiple things I can do. This is going to hit me for five. If they have a sacrifice outlet for one of these when I go to sanction it, then I lose, basically. All right, Sanction, you're going to have to do it here. That's fine. That's fine. All right, it actually did it. Ugh. Managed to get it despite their, uh, <laughs> their efforts otherwise. All right, this hand will be a lot better on the play because I could play Survivor and be able to counter something, but I think I'm still supposed to... Well, I'm obviously supposed to keep, but I'm going to play Survivor and then die to red-white. So... See if Survivor survives here. Yeah, that seems about right. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you're not resolving that. Now we can hold up trickery and soothing here.
Let's just bounce it as opposed to countering that. I would prefer to be able to counter their creatures as opposed to just their counter spells here. it in, given that double strike. Yep. If they have another Gimli's Fury, I lose. <laughs> I'm just going to chump here. I've died so many times to stupid combat tricks at this point in the format. <laughs> Let's cast Arwen's Gift for cheap. See if we can find a double spell here. We did. Um, yeah, I'll actually keep them both. Because this will give us an Amass trigger. And we can hold up Hithlane Knots on their turn. Although I can do the same thing on their turn. I can hit lane knots and then deceive as well. So. Sure, let's pass. They have priority, so they've got some sort of trick or land cycler. Westfold Rider, another human. Giving it to the Spearmaster. Do you have one more human? Nope. Okay. I think I would like to um, be able to amass to this turn, but this this trick is gonna be good for us. No, I think I've I think I've got to hold it. Do this, see what we can find. Still trying to figure out how to do this here <laughs> with all these double spells that I could be doing. Um, Let's go ahead and amass two. I don't think I can be attacking though. So we are tapped out of deceives here.
I guess I have to walk into their combat trick this time, or just trade. Do they have the smite? No, we'll trade. Okay. Ah, improvised club. Okay. All right, all right. Go ahead and kill Theoden. Hold up Dreadful here. Which is currently plus five plus five. <laughs> Here's Aemer. Now we've turned the corner. There we go. We finally turned the corner against Red White. <laughs> I guess I played it safely enough to be able to survive there, so... There we go. Alright, the hand is slow, <clears throat> but we do have Trickery to counter their 4-drop. Isolation to remove something if we need to. So we're just going to have to hope they don't get off to too quick of a start here. Which they're currently not doing. Let's see if they have a 3-drop. I'm sure they will. That's a great one. This is where being on the play would have been outstanding. I don't like countering that, but... I mean... Either that or we do literally nothing. Let's see if Rangers survives this turn here. Ooh, Anduril. Great card, but nothing to put it on. Let's cast Elrond, holding up Hithlane Knots. Yeah, that's a good card. Keep that one. Darn, Denethor can't sack himself, unfortunately. Grey Havens taps for colorless for now. One bottom and no plays. Okay. Thank God we did that. Looks like they're just kind of not drawing much here. Though getting rid of Rangers is still good for them, but I guess they just didn't really have much of a hand there, and I'll take those wins any day of the week. Because <laughs> I need them at this point. <laughs> With as rough as things have been going. Alright, no red yet, but we do have a glorious scale, so we just have to hope they don't go turn to Rally at the Hornburg. They've got a land cycler here, so we'll see if they cycle it. They didn't. Flamesmith really hurts when you're on the draw and they get to resolve the creature ahead of your glorious scale. I'm just going to cast Hithlane Knots before combat here because I've got nothing else to do. 
So they get to resolve something here. Elrond, I'm sorry, you don't quite do a lot right now. So, <laughs> get rid of you. Bag in to Porter, here he comes. Cast Arwen's Gift. Yeah. There was their land cycler, probably. Next turn, the obvious thing to do, or like the most man efficient thing to do, is Saruman the White, but I would like to. Cast Saruman, and then cast... Oof, that's ugly. I guess I can Peller Gear to block the Marauders, and then hold up Soothing here. To bounce the Bag End Porter. See if Pethergear Survivor indeed survives. Yeah, these big fat creatures are tough here. Interesting attacks there. can cast Saruman. And then I can deceive the enraged horn and then double block here to kill it, assuming they don't have interaction. Their interaction is probably fight based, in which case deceive is probably still good. Let's see. If they have an instant. No instant. So I get to safely do it here. See? Deceive the messenger. One mana, one, one. Kill their four, five. <laughs> That's what the card did here. Is it time to get aggressive? Eh, let's try it. This is not the line I would usually take here. But, I mean... They're at 7. We have a Gandalf Sanction for 7. If they play just Bag End Porter, we win. Let's see what else they have. Okay. Do we still win, though? So we Gandalf sanction this, hit them for five, they block this, they go to two, one, zero, yeah, they're dead. So, alright, it's not the line I would have usually taken, but it managed to work out in the end anyway. So, I guess that's why I'm losing as much as I can, because I'm not taking the correct line, which is the one I just took. <laughs> so there you go, when in doubt, just get aggro. <laughs> Okay, starting on the draw again, which has worked out so far, so I guess I won't complain. Land Cycler in hand. 
<laughs> Me too. <laughs> Let's see if they cycle theirs. They didn't, and I won't either, so... Good for you, opponent. Woe's Pathfinder. Is that something I need to soothing? Or should I just, like, Hithlane Knots on their upkeep? Let's Soothing instead. I'll try that on for size. See if they just replay it here. Okay. And still the Land Cycler. Pillar Gear Survivor or Hit Lane Knots? It's still Pillar Gear Survivor. Next turn we can play Rangers and steal their Pathfinder. Alright, now they've chosen to cycle. Alright, what's the play on four mana? I guess five mana. Swarming of Moria. Still three mana left. Many partings. All sorts of multicolor nonsense here. Getting a green. So they don't have blue or white in the deck, it doesn't look like. Still two mana, though. Alright, I guess it's just rangers here. And we're not doing anything with the mana, so let's loot. I think I'll get rid of Hithlane Knots. Doesn't seem to be doing much in this deck, necessarily. Just a little bit of tempo. Alright, does Rangers survive? I'm not necessarily expecting it to, but... It did not. So, if they're playing multicolor nonsense, I'm fully expecting them to have more than one land cycler, and next turn is the turn that they would cast that. And trickery is going to be outstanding against it. Um, if I just tap out for Saruman the White, and then they play, you know, Oliphant or Troll of Khazad Doom or something, I'm going to feel horrible. But if I pass and they don't do anything, I'm also going to feel horrible. <laughs> I can't just pass, can I? No, I don't think I can pass. Now, I mean, of course they're going to play a troll next turn or something, but I can't just pass here. That's tough. <laughs> 
I would have preferred to keep all of my card draw, but Sanction is a very good card in the deck here. All right, let's see if they resolve a land cycler. No, they just remove Saruman. Okay. Little did you know, I was not planning on double spelling anytime soon. Okay, now I can hold up Trickery and Isolation here, or I could just cast the Lorien Revealed. I'm gonna tap out one more turn. Now that we have Isolation, I feel better about tapping out. This isn't necessarily a race that we win, but is it worth the loot? I'm going to go one more turn here, because if they hold up Woe's Pathfinder, I can't block. Oh, hello, Saruman the White, number two. I like all of these cards, so as much as I want to hit my land drops, I do also want to loot. There's the troll, but that's okay. Like I said, I've got isolation, so I feel better about letting that resolve. Which means I can't Saruman the White this turn. I have to Isolation and potentially hold up Trickery. Just cast Arwen's Gift in Isolation. I think I'll cast Arwen's Gift and Isolation here. Let's pass. See if they have a way to get rid of Survivor here, or if the block was fine. Block seemed to be fine. How many cards do we have? 17? 27? How many cards are you playing in your deck? Many. <laughs> um, I guess we can cast Aemer and still hold up Trickery here. Could even attack with Survivor, but I don't see that as a race that we need to get into here. So we'll hold up Trickery, and now I think we feel relatively okay.
What do they have? We got the troll on the top of the deck. At some point here, Sanction also just kind of kills them. That is fine. That is also fine. I'd rather counter the troll. Another great draw. <laughs> so let's do this and see if we need to cast Deceive here. We can still hold up Trickery if we cast Deceive. Would also let us amass two. This will work out just fine. And that should probably do it, because we can just counter their troll now, and I think we, we've got it from here. Removal spell and trample spell to the face next turn if we want it. Well, if that's what you're going to cast, then I guess I'll counter it. And that should do it. Alright, 4-0? Blue-red is a great deck. <laughs> it wasn't particularly even open in the draft, and it's still already working out for us. I could complain about going second for like the 6th straight time or something, or the 5th straight time, but it's worked out. So, maybe we want to go second with this deck. <laughs> Who knows? So, we'll go second. Survivor on two goes a long way here. Dreadful can protect the survivor if we need it to. Could also give us a temptation. Dreadful has been a little bit better than expected so far for me in this draft. A little early to see a sanction in hand, unfortunately. Alright, blue-red v. blue-red. Who's got the better blue-red deck? They do. <laughs> At least so far. Because Bilbo is a stupid magic card. I'll let that resolve. Gotta pass it on back. I can hold up Gloria Scale and Saruman's Trickery here if needed. That's a lot of damage coming my way that I'd prefer didn't. It's not the greatest counterspell target, but it holds back all of this.
enters or leaves the battlefield. What a card. Um, so if I play Aemir, I tap out of Survivor. Yeah, let's play Aemir here. Or I mean, I tap out of Glorious Gale. All right, double Flamesmith trade. I think I'm okay with that. Scroll. That's a great card too. They're not blocking here. They're going to tap down two creatures, so I'd like to hold back one to block Bilbo and hold up Dreadful as the Storm here. Survivor is going to be one, so do we isolation in response? And then we can Glorious Gale Bilbo on the way back down, potentially? See if we have to use Gale here or not. Okay, that resolves. And they got rid of the two best cards in our deck there. Yeah, I'll keep them. No attacks, end the turn, counter Bilbo. So this can only bounce non-token creatures. We can sanction down their 3-3. Three, three. They have no creatures left. We have Soothing to bounce one of their creatures next turn. Let's do that. That way their amass doesn't get too out of control here. And then... The only thing we're doing is just holding up Soothing here. So... And Dreadful, I guess. So we don't need the mana from the Survivor. I don't think I'll play the land, because ideally I'm going to Ring Tempt up to level 2, and then I can loot it away. So I'll just hold on to the land. Let's see what their play is hopefully a non-token creature like war beast of god that is a non-token creature but it's a good one i guess as long as they're not the aggressor so i can dreadful to give this plus six plus six
Now let's go ahead and loot first. Okay. Arwen's Gift. I mean, these are good cards, so sure. Go ahead and just play Elrond now. Ah, oh, they have Glorious Gale. Good for them. Stern Scolding, same thing. There goes Bilbo. And nothing else for now. So what? We have... Seven, technically eight mana with Survivor here, so we can Lorien Revealed and then Gandalf Sanction. We could even draw land and then not have to tap Survivor. That would let us deal six extra damage, so they go to six. What if we just sanctioned, or what if we dreadful is the storm this, make it a 6-6, six, six, and then sanction down Bilbo, but still hit them for 6? That's, that's lethal, unless they have interaction here. Okay, that's lethal. Alright, 6-0. and oh. Let's cross our fingers we don't lose as many of the ways that we have so far this format when being 6-0 oh or 6-1. Let's get that trophy. Alright, going second for like the 6th or 7th time in a row with a hand we unfortunately have to mulligan, but we'll keep this one. See if it's good enough. Alright, what's your turn to that you're going to resolve ahead of our glorious gale? The Rally at the Hornburg. They now know we have Deceived the Messenger, so they're probably not attacking. <laughs> Alright, they did it anyway. Gandalf Sanction. Just gonna keep saying nope. <laughs> With a trickery as well this turn to counter Gimli. I hate being on the other side of games like this. It's so frustrating. It's just like, let me do anything. <laughs> we do have a good amount of card draw on the deck, so we gotta find it here. They found theirs. Double bottom. Arwen's Gift would be a pretty good top deck for us. They're holding up Glorious Gale here. Or hit lane knots. Or both. <laughs> Never know. Nice. Quarrel's End. They're finding their card draw, that's for sure. Survivor. Alright, I guess we see if they have Counterspell.
They've got something here. Nice. They've got Smite the Deathless. <laughs> We got a lot of cards we can draw here, we just gotta find them. I don't think it's worth using sanctions here. I mean, we can dome them for like 10 over the course of the next two turns. I mean, yeah. I think War Beasts is more important to sanction. I know they amassed too, but like, we had to get rid of that. Now we could kill this thing as well, and then it's just up to a top deck war from here, I suppose. We've got card draw. We got plenty of it. That currently dominates the board. <laughs> it doesn't do really what we want it to. I mean, it kills their 1-1 one, one and then blocks their human here. That was like the worst foray of orcs that's ever happened in LTR Limited. <laughs> Alright, well, they're drawing better than we are, so... I think we played the game fine, we just, we didn't draw what we needed when we needed to draw it. I mean, I have to trade. Okay. There we go. There we go. <laughs> All right. I guess I can dreadful down their survivor once they attack with it here again. But they do have an instant, so they could kill me in response. Let's try this first. I think we can take one. Oh no, but now they're going to get a ring tempt. And then it's going to make it very difficult to block. That's difficult now. Okay, that's pretty good. So if we do this, we cannot hold up isolation. Twenty-eight 
12 cards in deck. Do we just play the decking game here? I think we might. It's like a four turn clock currently. Also have a removal spell if we desperately need it. Huh. Can play Saruman. Attack with the survivor. Dreadful is the storm. Amass two. Ring tempts me. All that kind of stuff. No, I can't attack though because I don't have enough mana to also hold that up and attack. I can hold it up on blocks here. I'm just going to pass. They still have something in hand, so... If it's Improvised Club, I guess I lose. Okay. I think I'm still planning on Survivor being the win con here. Yeah. I said I lose to Improvise Club. That will do it, unfortunately. So they did have the club, unfortunately. But, good for them. I think we had the game if they didn't have the club there. That sucks. But we were losing to that no matter what with our game plan there, so darn. Okay, you can count better than me because you have access to go back here. I can't remember, but have we gone second in eight straight games now? Definitely seven of these games we've gone second. Like, I'm pretty sure it's been at least four in a row. I don't, I don't even know, man. The odds of things happening on the channel here are ridiculous. Hobbit Sting? Yep. That's okay. I'll pass it back, holding up Trickery and Soothing here. Go ahead. Okay. Who is the aggressor now? <laughs> it's me. 
Mario. Okay, they've got improvised club. At least that one didn't go to our face. I still feel fine about our spot here against Red White with where we're at. We're at 20. They've got one card in hand. Sure. I can take a hit from Eagles in order to land a Saruman here. I don't mind taking three. This is also a race we win if nothing happens, if nothing changes here, so I can just let the Eagles... Yeah, like, that's fine. With lesser power. If only I had, um... <laughs> Deceive the messenger right now. Instead, I could just play this as a 4-mana 3-3. Three, three. Tempt me. Amass 2 with Soothing of Smeagol here. I get double temptation. Let's do that. Let's do Saruman. Let's do Soothing. Amass 2. Put it over here. And now I get... A loot. There's the eagles. And the land in hand, notably. Hithlane knots. Dreadful is the storm, and let's <laughs> win. That'll do it. All right, we managed a 7-1 with the deck. Would have loved a 7-0, but I'll take a 7-1. It has been a long road to get back to the trophy train with this format, because this format has been my arch enemy but here we are with a 7-1 with a deck that I didn't even think was like super outstanding. But this proves the power of these blue cards and especially blue red as an archetype. Double Deceive the Messenger, Double Soothing has been great. Survivor was outstanding at blocking. Double Trickery. We had two Arwen's Gift and a Lorien Reveal. We had Rangers, Foray, Double Sanction. I mean, I guess it was kind of the blue red deck of your dreams. 7-1, I will take it. Always play 17 lands in your blue-red decks it is what works out. Thanks for sticking around at the end of this one. I'll see you next time for your daily draft.